Hello, welcome everyone to the RCAP Solutions sixth quarter RCDI training. This training today will focus on hydrant flushing. Um, as the weather gets nice, I'm sure a lot of utilities are going to go out there and start with their hydrant inspections and flushing. And that's what we'll focus here on this training. Um, we are pushing back our manhole inspection with GIS mapping until the next quarter. Um, so look for an invitation to that. Um, the next couple of weeks, and we'll schedule that um, sometime around mid-June. Um, as always, feel free to access this hub page to view current and past trainings. We have recordings of all our previous trainings down below here, um, as well as um, a survey where you can put in training topic proposals that, that uh, we could certainly consider for future trainings. Here's that form. If you have a topic you'd like to see, feel free to email us, call us, or put it in the survey form here. Uh, we also have uh, some resources on regionalization. Um, and what's new here, I think Adam will get this updated. We have a, a GIS. Let's look at the regionalization roadmap real quick. Um, if we haven't gone over these with you so far, we will here shortly in the future. Um, some assessments and SWOT analysis and resources to give small systems some guidance on regionalization opportunities. And a couple of our other RCAP resources here. And lastly, um, Adam, we do have that. Uh, the new GIS guidebook that all the different RCAP regions collaborated on, and that'll be available on our hub site here too. We have the, the link here at the bottom of the page. Yeah, right there. Okay, without further ado, we are going to show our demonstration on hydrant flushing and some of the tools that we can work with in GIS. We're, we're pleased to have Herb from Searsport here. He's a an expert in this realm. He's gonna talk, a little bit about um, you know what they do in Searsport with their flushing, how they operate. We have some of his uh, flushing forms in Excel that we're going to transfer over to the GIS, and we're going to show you how all this works um, with some really neat tools that really Adam had, has spearheaded, um, and we made them pretty useful. And um, you know this is all certainly customizable to be as useful as it can be to any utility. So go ahead and take it away, Adam. Show us what you got. Yeah, so just to give a little background, um, Herb showed us his great fire flow record form, um, which you can record the static residual pedo pressures, and you're going to get um, an accurate representation of an actual incident. If you're um, in, you know, a fire situation, you'll know how much um, fire hydrant flow you'll have to um, fight off that fire and it also tells you a lot about your um, main capacity and the pressures in your system um, to better understand um, some weak spots if you have any leaks or some failing assets but anyway so what we wanted to do is replicate his excel sheet inside our survey form with the same calculations and to be able to do a little more um, so this shows kind of a background that we can tie this data, the locations, any previous data into a more um, applicable application that they can use real time with their mapping uh, GIS map. So this can be built into their um, water utility map with all their other assets but we do like to have a standalone flushing map in addition, and that's what you're seeing today, um, just to make it easier to visualize. So typically we'd have the aerial imagery um, for the full on water utility map, but this allows us just to kind of look at which hydrants we flushed, um, which are the ones shown in the green and then the red. Um, and we are working through some real examples to incorporate the data, but we're just after the test period. Um, but to walk through it, it's as easy as um, pulling up the map. And this workflow will actually be the same on your phone or tablet as it is on the desktop computer. 
as long as you have the Survey123 app downloaded. In that app, you can download on your computer and your phone or tablet. Um, and when you do and click on a hydrant, we're going to use, um, we can use number one here, or actually let's use a different one. Um, and we can delete these test records so Herb doesn't have a mess of any um, inaccurate data in his records. So it'll automatically, whether this is on your phone or computer, most likely you're going to be using a phone or tablet in the field, walking up to that hydrant. Um, and I can also show that later on a screen mirror with my phone. And so you can actually walk through this. Mostly all of the hydrant outlet sizes for your host is going to be 2.5 inch, but they do have a few three inches that they can account for in this calculation. Um, so we're going to keep it at 2.5. If you do conventional versus unidirectional, um, we are working on for the few hydrants that they are able to unidirectionally flush to have like a group ID so we can um, generate that list on demand, but we're still kind of working on that. Um, so for now, we'll just do a conventional flush um, and we're going to also do the full on um, pedo and static gauge so we can do the fire flow tests. But it'll actually generate. So if you just had your pedo gauge and was just doing a flush, then you can click on that and then record um, just your um, pedo pressure. And it'll automatically get today's date, time. So, you know, if you took a few minutes, you can go ahead and change that. Um, let's say we started a few minutes ago. Actually, you would go down. So 113, we'll pretend I'm flushing right now and I had a pedo pressure of 32. It's successfully flushing. If it's not, then you can hit no here. And the cool thing about that is we have a color code based on the hydrant flow, but we also added if it's not um, functional to uh, generate like a black um, halo outline around that hydrant so we know it's non-functional. And so every other functioning hydrant is going to represent the hydrant flow. Red is going to be by default, but if we change this and actually did a fire flow test or if it had a previous rating, um, we can go ahead and add these in. I'll, add, I'll just put a different value so it doesn't confuse anyone. We'll have a pressure drop percentage and the hydrant flow, and it'll actually generate um, which color code it's based on, based on the hydrant flow. And um, so if you don't know, I should probably have an image that kind of shows that little chart of um, 1500 and above being blue, I think 1000 to 1499 is gonna be green, um, 500 or less is uh, red, and then orange is 500,000, then you have green at 1000, to $14.99, I think that's right. <laughs> um, so if you if we change that, say we had, um, let's just see if this, uh, I'll change the pressure drop here. It's still, so if we change our pedo, let's put 10 something. Um, now we have an orange, the hydrant flow is $5.99. Um, and so this will automatically reflect all that. Then we can say, um, if they need to be painted. So we want to incorporate this. Hopefully this year with the Sears port, um, they'll be able to, they have some new hydrants too. And so they can go through and say, oh, it still needs painted or we just painted it while we flushed it now. So they can answer that question. If it was successfully flushed. Um, put their initials, put her for this one. We'll go ahead and submit this. Um, I didn't put the end time of flushing. <laughs> so I just saw that the water loss and the number of minutes. But so all everything in the blue is calculated. If you don't answer in the red, um, some of these calculations might not appear. But you can always go back to the survey too and update. So even if you just did a static pressure reading of a hydrant and had static pressure readings of all of your hydrants, that would already be logged in there. Um, and then you can update 
or we can set it up so it's not already in there. It's very customizable based on um, how you're going about your pressure readings. And so what we created on top of this web map, which it'll kind of automatically refresh over time, especially on the, the phone and tablet, it works a little better. But we created this um, dashboard. I'll go and refresh just in case but it should automatically refresh everything inside the map. We have it set to like every minute to do that. Um, and so if we scroll in here, we can see um, now we have another successful um, flush indicator on there. If we put no for successfully flush, then it would show the red symbol um, like here, one. And so um, let's see, we have, I guess we did mark two on there. I'll have to check. Uh, might be one hiding on us. But yeah, so we can have a lot of details flushing per year. Um, shows five right here. And these are based on the results that we put in. So it's not actually accurate where we have a couple of um, flush from 2016. But we can make it represent either the data that's already in the table or what we put real time. Um, and we click down here, we'll have like a table, we can download the data and this will have the inspection um, data with the um, any information that will go straight into um, Excel, I believe. So then there's a CSV file you'll have a copy of. And this has all of the residual pressure and what we're working on actually is a feature report that will make this look a lot nicer. It'll actually look um, a little bit like Herb's um, Excel spreadsheet that he uses um, to mimic that so that that way they can export and have a matching copy um, if they need to turn into state or any compliance situation or just you know showing a meeting or something it's nice to have um and then yeah, yeah go ahead i know i'm rambling <laughs> oh no no I, I didn't want to interrupt you but well I, I sometimes i have to do that while i'm thinking about something he's showing it so this right here what you've done when we go out and flush and then put in that data um is that going to i see you have dates on it, it are we going to be able to uh take that and put it in to a one year um i want to say history so from january yeah. 1 to december 31 of exactly. each year when we go yeah. out and flush. yep yep so that's what seth and i are working on it, it's called a feature report and yeah we can actually set the parameters and um most likely too we'll be able to give you access to generate your own report based on that filter so you could mm -hmm. say like you want it to start from january 2022 to now or um by yeah you could set a year year and six months whatever range you want and then it would only generate those values we have that up there adam the flush date filter so yeah, unfortunately, oh, okay. we didn't get a chance to put in a lot of Herb's data yet. So we have like four records so far, but you so can, and there's the, the calendar. Okay. Yeah, there's also a calendar. You can pick dates too, but yeah, you can choose the time and this should update those tables that you could export them as well. But yeah, yeah instead nice. of filter, you can pick dates here on the calendar um, from yeah. them too, or to see what you did. And that should update everything here on uh, that is stuck because we are working on that here with with my guys when they go out we're actually getting ready to go out and do our uh, spring flushing and um, so when they go out and everybody has an iPad here that we do for the GIS part of it meter reading and we're going to be utilizing it for this so they'll be able to go out there and put all that data in there um, how easy is it for you because I see all these hydrants on here this was oh this is an old um older i should say not old old but an older uh map location of the hydrants not all of them are on there how quick and easy is it to put uh, new additional hydrants in and take remove hydrants because sometimes when we're doing water main uh installs we'll take and remove a hydrant from an existing location and put it into a more strategic location uh, to meet our date uh, demands today yeah so it's actually 
pretty easy um, and this would be the kind of similar even easier on your tablet or phone in person but if we hit this um, edit icon here and of course you'd have your aerial imagery on your water utility map so again Herb um, we'll have the second updated water utility map that shows every asset your updated aerial imagery so you can make sure it's in the right location but if it's not you can um, with your GPS unit, it'll actually have your current location. So you'll be able to update it with your current location, but you can also um, click and drag. Click on it, move it around. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, Good. that's another way that's pretty easy. And then you can hit update and I'll update if I like moved over here. I'm not going to, so I'll just hit the back button, yeah. discard edits, and now it stays the same. Um, it'll be... Uh, I'll okay, show you, cool. and we can definitely have a more um, technical session with the screen mirroring of the phone and everything um, to show you, you know, update your locations in person. But yeah, using um, Herb as just purchased a GPS unit. So having that is even for something like a hydrant, I know it seems kind of silly to like, oh, you can see them, but when you have those gate valves so close to the hydrants, it's nice to use the GPS unit for everything. Um, yeah. So you have super accurate um, GPS locations. But uh, but yeah, if we add it, I could even, you know, on here, um, we add valves, uh, here's for typing. Then, now this again is older data set that we're kind of updating, but then now we have your valves pretty close. So as kind of I said, those valves can stack like right on top of a hydrant. So, and of course we'll have the photos attached to, so you can see like if the, um, and then with the valve too, but um, yeah, any pictures to update, you can have the old photos still attached. Everything becomes historically attached to this and that's what makes it so nice can you show a little more about the pop-up adam and how, like the information that's available about the hydrant and how they can access some of those older records yeah i'll be right, so. I'll be right back guys i've got to take it okay yeah sure thing yeah so the pop-up here um all these fields will be generated with the existing values so if it's um church street if it's uh by the road location and this is nice because, again, when you export in Excel, we can attach all of this data on top of the flushing fire flow record. So not only, you know, will you have the static pressure readings um, kind of like Herb's form on here, but we can actually attach all of that data with your um, parent hydrant feature being the hydrant itself. And so even things such as the owner if it's a public hydrant or a private one, um, they do have a few private hydrants. Um, so just everything that, you know, this is a really robust data set that we've worked on with hydrants, valves, uh, meters, doing a lead inventorying. And so you can really generate, you know, good reports from this. Um, but the, the pop-up really does make it easy to have just a click of a button to do inspections. Um, and then of course you can edit and have the drop down fields for any of, um, and we're, we kind of gave Herb the master list, but we're actually gonna scratch this down to the few manufacturers he has. Um, so. Yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, I'd like to talk with, Herb a little more, I guess, ask him some questions about his processes, how he's previously done it to capture right. all the values in the field. Waiter, Brian, do you have any comments from your experience working with systems on their flushing? I personally don't know many that go this far. I know Herb's, Herb's a really successful operator, um, you know, probably one of the best in the state there. So I think he, he goes all out with this, and I haven't really seen that as much at small utilities, but I don't know if you guys had any experience. Um, um, you know, in for me, yeah, I, I mean, I've set people up with flushing, the ability to track flushing through GIS, but I don't know of any who followed through or consistently yeah. did so. Um, you know, they're gonna, 
I, when I was just looking at that list, um, you know, all the different attributes, my thought was, uh, obviously you want to hide anything that is unnecessary. Um, but they are, when it comes to flushing, mm -hmm. you are standing there for a few minutes. So you got a little bit of time to fill <laughs> everything off. <laughs> well, that's a really good point. Yeah. The, and, and the second half, I don't think we showed it yet, but on the second half of that, uh, survey one, two, three, that Adam showed is, um, an inspection form. But yeah, I think mm -hmm. capturing some of that information about the hydrant, we maybe throw that in there too. Cause if they're, yeah, if they're standing there for 15 or 20 minutes, they're going to get bored and might as well fill out some of this information. But that's yeah, really that's, good I guess that's my only thought there. And in, in my experience, the, as minimal as it is, there's the, the folks that are taking on the GIS are mostly the younger crew that are more computer savvy and they're interested at this point and and learning so anything that we can bring along that's a new bell or whistle they're they're jumping all over it and adding everything they can because the old guy that's sitting in the office that knows all the information is going to leave in a few years and they want to document as much as they can so i think it's a great attribute yeah, yeah. and i would say oh go ahead brian well, I was just going to say doing the inspection too could be really useful for a young operator, just in general, right. getting familiar with all the components. But... Yeah, and I would just say, I mean, maybe some of the old guys go out there and they flush these hydrants. They're, they're not writing down anything. They're just flushing them to clear them out. But, you know, if they do have any kind of inspection forms, we could match the survey to that. So it's digital. Um, I know Adam's done a lot of research. We've got some great calculations in here. So, you know, hopefully they would catch on to something like this, but we could match up our inspection form, a flushing form to whatever, um, you know, they, 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 they currently use if they, if they like their existing forms. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. We've been. I'll say yeah. too, like on the contrary to like, I've had, um, some of the older operators that are near retirement that see the benefit of giving all their knowledge to all the younger guys. So um, I've had one in Kentucky that sat there in the evenings updating metered information that he knew. And the next day I was like, oh my gosh, there's, you know, 50 assets were updated <laughs> since I last worked with them. And they are now out GPSing, you know, alongside with each other. And it does create a good teamwork effort, collaborative. Um, if one person sees one thing, they can take a photo, take some notes, and they don't have to physically be next to them to show on their phone what happened. Um, and it's nice when, you know, operators to go on vacation or something you might have location knowledge or historic records that you don't, you can then, you know, step away. So there's, I think incentives for everybody to do it. It's just getting them on board and realizing the benefit. And of course, at first it seems like a lot of work and I agree, Brian, I think like hiding any unnecessary information to kind of streamline it and make it seem more approachable at first, but um, at the same time, when you're there and GPSing, like if you can capture as much data as you can in one swipe, then th that can be nice to not have to go back and forth over and over. <laughs> um, right. And, and you eliminate, I mean, a big part of this, if you can get folks comfortable with exporting the data, you're mm -hmm. eliminating that redundancy where someone writes it on a form and on a paper, um, on a clipboard and then re-enters and, and but there is that aspect of showing people arc online or or uh survey one two three mm -hmm. yeah because it's one of the things that sucks is like those big filing cabinets just full of stuff that's hard to find or you probably don't need it if you can just store it digitally and say here's my hydrant report from this year it's just so much easier well and we're moving to like even with this lead um, update mandate with the copper roll, uh, you know, having the flushing records digitized to to go along with all of your pipe data and service lines, I think like um, we're also working on just putting like sample locations to go with this. 
Um, so you can update and do the same workflow for every kind of inspection or operation. There's going to be a button. You click on that sample location, record sample. Um, so we're trying to tie in like other every single, you know, operation we can think of that you can digitize. But of course, there's a little mm -hmm. upfront work. But once the upfront work is all set up, a lot of this will just be real time exportable. Um, so yeah, it's just getting past that initial hurdle and then it's kind of, uh, going from there, but. But you have, uh, Herb, when, when you were going, Brian, Brian mentioned that when you guys are out there flushing, you might be standing there 20 minutes or a half an hour. That might be a good opportunity to fill out some of the other information about your hydrants. Um, especially some easy things, getting the manufacturer, making sure that's verified the model, the cast year. Um, seeing if there's any damage, you know, any yeah. things like that. Because if you're out there anyway, you might might as well collect it. Make sure you have pictures <laughs> of all your hydrants as well. Yeah, you um, might want to look for the, the hydro valve. There. There. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, maybe take good guys. I did get I did get back in time enough to hear you were talking really nice about me. So I I figured you must have seen <laughs> me on the camera or something walking back here. So um, yeah, <laughs> much appreciated. Um, yeah, so you know what. When, when, when we go out and flush hydrants, we go out in a team and we, we do it in a hopscotch fashion. Um, so they've got plenty of time. By the time we uh, get our data off in one hydrant, then the other hydrant is starting to open up. We usually will we'll begin the, uh, the issue of opening up the secondary hydrant while we're closing down the, uh, the primary hydrant. Uh, and that avoids any potential of water hammer too, because you know we we like to keep that water flowing for one thing. So that's a big uh, big help uh, when they do that. But they do have plenty of time. Uh, they'll every every one of us has an iPad, and uh, we usually team up with two or three. Um, some hydrants, you know, uh, you just can't flow them adequately because you're going to be flowing them directly in the road, or somebody's got a you know, a, a new garden or something or whatever the case may be. So we kind of face those issues. And what we do is we take a backhoe out with us. And so we flush it right into the uh, bucket of the backhoe. So we're not causing any damage and then it can just flow down and out that way. Um, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting when you're sitting in the backhoe though, when you're getting a uh, thousand, 2000 <laughs> gallons a minute of water at you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you want to back for us. <laughs> yeah, if you really want to get your guys back, you just aim the backhoe accordingly and uh, mm -hmm. turn the bucket, and you can really splash them good. Um, <laughs> we only do that on hot days. Uh, <laughs> do you no, normally do this at nighttime? Do you do it at nighttime, Herb, or you do it during the day? Or no, we, we do it during the day, and I think you, you'll find that most water utilities do theirs during the day, or they do them at times when. Uh, you know, businesses will do them early in the morning. Depends on where we are in the system. Our system is in such a, and I'm going to knock on wood, but our system's in such great shape now with all the new water mains that, um, and their large diameter water mains. So our impact on the customers while we're flushing is very minimal now, uh, which is a great thing. One thing I wanted to point out, uh, Adam, when you go up on the hydrant nozzle size, um mm -hmm. there's no three there's no three inch nozzle here in the state of maine that i'm aware of it's four oh, inch. okay so it's all 2.5 2.5 and four inch four inch is what we call the four steamer inch. nozzle that was a back in the old day old old saying but uh some call it the pumper nozzle now so if you hear steamer nozzle pumper nozzle that's the larger nozzle out of the front of the hydrant it's typically four inch some other states may carry larger it really depends uh, but ours are two and a half for the side nozzles and four inch for the large and is that always still... appreciate and those are all national standard nice. thread okay i do believe i don't think they're this i don't think they're anything different i think they're nsts there was one national hose thread, then there's New York thread. It really depends on where you are in the country. There we go. So now you can click, and that'll still update with the calculation. Well, that was quick and easy. Look at that. I like that. <laughs> I was only testing you. I just wanted to see how easy no, this stuff No, that's what we need. <laughs> you did good.
You did good. And I like the time. That is really important because if we know what, and generally what we're flowing, and we try to flow it as hard as we can, and if we know what that hydrant will put out, that time is critical. And I'll tell you what I what I struggle here with is the unaccounted for water. I think I mentioned down at our meeting in Augusta, I, I might mm -hmm. be very conservative. I think I am. But man, yeah. my trying to get that water, the unaccounted for water down to 10% is what PUC likes to see. But in PUC, what they don't understand is that, you know, um, larger utilities, a 10% um, or I should say 10% loss for larger utilities that are using millions of gallons a day could be thousands and thousands of gallons. 10% for Searsport could be 20 gallons a minute. So, you know, so it's not a, that's not an even heel we're working on. I, I've got to get mine down to 10%, which means I, I can only lose 20 gallons a minute and they got to get theirs at 10%, but they could be losing a thousand gallons a minute. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I raise that point with PUC every time I turn around. And so <laughs> so I actually put my, I, I convert my percentage into gallons per minute so they can really see what the gallons per minute I'm losing. I'm glad you would um, pointed out something that I could update real time because I wanted to show like if there's ever something on the survey that it'll actually say update available, you can click there and then it'll have a updated form. And if it uh -huh. doesn't, um, in the survey, it'll have inside your name, of course, it'll say Herb here, and then you'll have your download surveys, and you can refresh it this way, too. So that way, like, you'll have the updated form, and now if I, you know, on your map, click on a hydrant and do the same workflow, it's now going to have the 4-inch um, updated so what you saw before is kind of the design element, what we do on our end, then we publish it up to the operators yeah. and everyone. Yeah. So now, and that'll actually impact the calculation, as you probably know, you know, the amount of discharge, uh, gallons per minute, of course, bigger opening of a outlet. Um, right. So. Yeah. And usually for flushing, we don't use the larger one. It really depends because I just don't have I don't have the equipment to monitor the flow on that larger nozzle. Um, we're going to get it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's a big difference from, you know, a, a thousand, a little more and then up to <laughs> twenty eight hundred. And of course, when you're thinking your water loss and everything, that makes a huge difference. So having those accurate because I know like her pretty much everybody just like kind of estimates and like having the calculation built in with the number of minutes auto calculate. Yeah. Sure and that is, time. that is nice. I, you did a good job with that. I like that. I like the ability to be able to, you know, monitor the and, time, the start time, start time. Yeah. And um, what we want to do on top of this is that, so this water loss would add to a new dashboard that we can tie in with your water leaks and then we can add up the gallons together and have, you know, at least from an operational um, unaccounted for or accounted for water loss, getting that yeah. up and, you know, seeing where it's coming from, whether it's, you know, you have to for water quality with the flushing and then um, you know, water breaks are happening with aging infrastructure. So just got to record. Oh, I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear it. I had my ears closed. You didn't hear it, no. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, oh, and um, also, Herb, uh, one last thing. We did add a little maintenance checklist, too, and we can kind of beef this out, but kind of yeah. just saying it feels grease. Can you add another operator, too, to that easily? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, so we've got HP, that's Harold Porter. Um, so that's where the three operators. Okay. I figured while you're in here doing that, it might be a, yeah. oh, that's, look at you. He even saved a spot for it. <laughs> now, do you want a particular order to, do you want um, HP to be above where you're at, like here? Doesn't it, really does not, it does not matter to okay. me. I'm, I'm not that <laughs> no <critical>. hierarchy. <laughs> it may want to put may want to put him in alphabetical order. I don't know, but you know we know. Right, who we that's are. true. Yeah, we could do that here. Well, of course, yeah. Of course, that would uh, still HP, put me on the low list. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, those guys, those guys, my, guys, my guys are great. They're all they're all on a pedestal, as far as I'm concerned. 
That's great. And you yeah, put in some nicknames on like <laughs> <laughs> Not not many. <laughs> we uh, my my foreman though, we call him uh, Bell Joint Wilson. Um, <laughs> wherever he marks a spot to dig, we find a bell joint. It's like we don't want to find a bell joint, Tim. Let's go. We stone out. We got to go up or down. But we call a bell joint whistle. He's very good at finding bell joints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bell in, in connect right there. Would you mind showing like the tablet view? Yeah. Um, let me just try that. I guess Adam's showing kind of the back end of the survey one, two, three, but as you can see, like it's all super customizable. We've seen the calculations. We can have contingent values that we've seen here too. Yeah, so there's so much you can do now with just with hydrant flushing, but you really with any other kind of maintenance or inspections that you have, if you want to make them digital, there's a lot of cool stuff like this you can do. I think it's on the right yeah. end. We'll have, we'll get into this in a later training, but again, like this is a similar with the new lead survey, um, mm, yeah. it's actually broken down into ways where you can go through step-by-step -step, a group identifying, having all your billing information, actually walking through and having the scratch test. So again, just wanted to show a little sneak peek. We'll have that. In, maybe our next session with the manholes i'm not too sure um, where we we'll got make sure if if i have to i know that howard clark at the wastewater um and dan uh they don't mm -hmm. have access to a computer down there don't ask me why i have no <laughs> any, i'm not even part of that department we're totally separate and right like right been fighting for him and i don't know maybe he just doesn't want one but he has to he has to um submit all his documentation to the dep by hand and it's like boy oh. those days those days were gone 30 years ago oh <laughs> wow yeah yeah even it's if like you could find a tablet solution or something to oh they could they could yeah i, don't, I just don't think <laughs> i mean you can get us you know uh, it's a google laptop for like 200 bucks now <laughs> so he could have something, but yeah. at any rate, hey, what I'll do is when you get ready for that, let me know in advance and I'll invite him up here. We have for a sure that would be good because yeah, we, yeah, definitely... we can put him right out in the conference room uh, and have it on the big screen. And you know, we've just got that all set up now so that we have a better camera system, better you know, better video system, so it works well. Oh yeah, definitely. And we have some good data from in the field with them, so it would be good to continue on the wastewater side too. It's there's a lot of crucial overlaps <laughs> as well. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna be it's gonna be fun oh, working with you on this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um I'm trying to think so this year you will you're gonna try to do some pressure color coding like along with this survey and everything, right? When, uh, yeah, so this year is going to be, yeah. we've still got a lot of construction going on, but in the meantime, um, we're going to go out and gather uh, all of our flows. We've held off on that because uh, as we've been progressing through replacing water mains, it has changed our uh, flow rates, obviously, quite a bit. So we didn't yeah. want to get into, pa into painting when we knew we'd have to change them in a different color. Well, and also... Year. Herb, one thing, I was in a city recently and I saw they don't actually paint the hydrants themselves. And I thought that was kind of smart. They used like with their reflectors or the with flags. the markers. Yeah, because yeah. like with your marker, you could, you know, move that marker to a different one if that pressure. So that's something to consider too. If um, Well, that's, maybe... that's, I think that's what we're going to do, Adam, is uh, uh, they have reflective. So with our flags that we have, we're going to have uh, dual flags. Uh, one is going to be a fluorescent uh, reflective. Uh, nice. Color -coded and that's flags. nice for the nighttime. So people aren't hitting yeah. or if you're covered in snow. Like I at DC, like they had those and I was like, oh, there's a hydra. I was like spotting them at nighttime. <laughs> yeah. All of ours was a reflective. And then we've got the little flags that we can attach to them. So one will have a hydrant number and the other one will correspond and have a reflective uh, color code on it. Um, so that will indicate the flow and then the, then we'll have the hydrant number so we, we could just pick out a number pop it in and find its location or you know or just write that down yeah okay. right 
Oh, and that's something else too with the tablet version, and I'll show you that next time. Um, you can actually search by hydrant number, and it'll pull directly to that hydrant. You can yeah. even do na navigation directions if it was a new operator, and you're like, go to hydrant eighty nine, and you can put directions too. <laughs> nice, so, nice. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Of course, I know you guys know where everything there is, but. <laughs> well, you know what. Um, the initially they'll be all hopefully in in order throughout the system throughout the way uh -huh. that we do it but it's you, more with the add, construction to yeah, I, i'm that. trying to pre-plan so that i know where we're going to be adding hydrants in the future so in mm -hmm. part of my pre-planning i'm i'm actually reserving those hydrant location numbers so you may say well where's hydrant four well that hasn't been installed yet well, what you can also do, Herb, I've seen too, is you can use letters. So you could do 3A for any additional. That's how manholes too, like buried manholes, if they're like, yeah. oh, shoot, there was another one there, then we'll put it as 3B. And then that so you don't have like, to go all the way through the system. Right. right yeah. So you yeah. have like a 3A and it's like, that's not big of a deal. I know the numbers are nice when you have the full number, <laughs> like especially if you're putting writing or you know putting them on there you don't really we were thinking them. about doing them in five you know number five increments and then saving space in between but the problem yeah. with that is we have we have 174 hydrants so right we yeah decided, and then it, we decided no we'll just go one through whatever i would just do ones and you get a more accurate inventory number to like you know yeah. how hydrants are in your system um and we don't care if we add more on later we'll just what if we get one say geez how can we went from hydrant two to hydrant 180 well guess what 190 hydrant 180 80 was pretty newer pretty you know it's it was later added later on in the system so exactly yeah, yeah. That's, That's how I would do it. I would either have the letter thing or do the, just exactly like you said, just it's not that big of a deal. And you'll have with this GIS map, you know, the numbers will be linked up. So you'll know, like, if something's a little weird or it's just like you click on the photo and you're like, well, that's because that's a brand new hydrant or that's an older one there. And so, but yeah, that, yeah. that one has the address. Right there. Well, what, we're, we're really looking forward to to getting that updated and starting. Start oh, for sure. Yeah, this was a good session. I think we really covered a good introduction to, and then, you know, when we have some uh, data from this year too, and um, some. Yeah, some real so one, one thing I don't have saved on my computer is access to um, our map here. Okay, I'll give you this. Yeah, we had to recreate some maps. So actually, yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, so I'll give you this link directly and where it's shared within a group. You, as long as you're logged in, your credentials, it'll work, and then you can re-bookmark it. Um, yeah. And then on your tablet, Herb, if you refresh your field maps, like it should pop up with this new map. Um, and we'll make it work so you can do it all offline and everything. And um, yeah, that's kind of by the end of the week we'll have some some work in order uh stuff for you yeah, and we can, <laughs> we can we can get back together and uh go through that are you coming up again or yeah yeah i'm actually well so I'm, of course you know i told you i'm going to 11 11 in maine which i guess brian i didn't tell you that i'll be over along the border but still a little far from you <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably in between the... you and wait or you and herb actually a few hours each or a couple hours <laughs> okay. I thought you were talking cool. of Lebanon, New Hampshire. Oh, Lebanon, Maine, that's a little bit better. It's a little closer, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> You'll be like an hour and a half, I think, or so. Um, no, and then yeah, that's a good area. Yeah. They they, so. they still use cups and strings to communicate, but so you <laughs> That's why, yeah, someone told me, oh, I, it'll seem like you never <laughs> left Kentucky. <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll find Lebanon has some hollers. Yeah, yeah, there's no yeah, there you go. different kind of holler. <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah, hollers. Different. Hey, <laughs> some with snow filled in them. <laughs> oh, geez, but cool guys. Well, we'll we'll spot. follow up and yeah, any um you know updates on this we'll provide. Yeah, and, it's, it's um, looking we'll have good. a recording of this and we'll provide this link and really start getting some of this data out there in video. Yeah. So. And, um, and I don't know, Adam, if we did this when you were up before. I know we were trying to get a lot done in a short mm -hmm. amount of time. 
Right. Um, you know that in some instances on the ends, very ends of some of our water mains, we don't have hydrants, but we have blow offs and or bleeders. If we yeah. Call it, well, we make, well. Yeah. So we open those up to flush the very end. And it would be it would be nice to have um, something on where you've got gay valves, hydrants, hydrant inspection. Uh, if you had one for blow offs and if we could set that up very similar, not not. 100% like the hydrant, but if we yeah, set up take it out. like turn I it actually, on, how long did you flow it, the estimated gallons, because those are going to be estimate, I think. I don't think we're going to get a real, because that's going to be based on the length of the blow-off line and all that. Okay, so, yeah. So no, I think that's a good, uh, Kentucky had a ton of blow-offs. They love the blow-off valves. <laughs> in um, you, some cases, you don't have a choice, because we'll put a hydrant right. in, but we'll put a short section of main and after it and then we'll put a, a bleeder on the end of the, that and we'll le we'll leave it on for future reference so that it if we extend the water main at any point we actually use that blow up now as a disinfection point for the new line when we extend it it's already in place mm, but we okay. still flush it to main keep the water fresh in the very ends of those lines after the yeah hydro. you got so that I will short tell Herb, I did originally have those under the gate valve option, you know, like fresh reduce and your in line, et cetera. But I changed the blow off into the hydrant form to do exactly what you're saying. So, oh, okay. we, can All right. so we can account for like treat it as I saw someone else did that in their design. I was like, that actually makes more sense because it is a flushing device at the end of the it day. It is, it is. Yeah, um, I see it right so. there now where you pop that up. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll have a little other marker, blow off, flush hydrant or a post hydrant, whatever yep, you want, yep. you know, the underground or above ground little ones too. I don't think you have any of those little post or flush though. You just have the We blow don't, off. but you never know. I mean, we may you install could one. one day. Yeah. <laughs> we we don't in invent. Backyard. Yeah, we don't invest in those because we have other reasons, you know, like I said, for future disinfection and things of that nature. So we don't uh, we don't install the post ones, but it doesn't mean that there might be a location at some point where we would put one in. I don't know. Right. We we, yeah. we would go we would go to a hydrant versus those. That's um, fair. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. But so, you know what? Well, we, no, we that's great though. Yeah. Just say good. leave it in there. It doesn't bother us. That's why I'm a, yeah, yeah. And that's the cool thing with this. Um, I can actually, for your alls, I'll just um, rename this blow off. And then, so we create these templates, but then another system, they might have all three. So I keep that there. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, for yours though, I can go in there and, um, and edit. Change, change it's it up. literally as easy. Yeah, go to the style options, uh, color. Oh. And as we get going through this, so uh, we can have you edit it. Uh... You know, there we go. So we'll just do on blow some off. day we could get together. Blow off, yep. There we go. And then look at that. Pull that in there, save it. You make it look too easy, man. <laughs> some of it is, some of it is not. And I know Brian and Seth can attest for me when I say yeah, I'm that. Sure. <laughs> so uh, I'm impressed that was pretty quick right there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, Cool, but yeah, and then so now you just have the blow off symbol here for that one. So I'll just yeah. do that little square. And if you, you know, um, you could even herb later by the end of the week, we'll have it set up offline, everything. You can go out there with your GPS, get an accurate spot of it, click it on there. All these, it'll still ask for hydrant number. Just ignore that. You can ignore that and then just for right now, we are, yeah. All of our hydrants are going to be numbered. We're actually ordering the, uh, they're just going to be a, a placard type thing that, mm -hmm. that uh, bolts onto the hydrant on the very front of it. doesn't have nice. to be anything special, but we will number the front of the hydrant that way. And then nice. we'll put a color coded uh, top on. I think no neon be lights uh, attached with a solar panel. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll probably, I'll probably get some grant money from the state. I mean, they're big into solar. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, get a solar for every hydrant. Get some. Yeah, uh, get yeah. No, just tell them we're, we're hooking them into the grid. Next time someone crashes into, it'll be expensive. <laughs> no. Yeah, cool. half of them run off anyway, and you can't bill them because nobody will give you their insurance information or their contact information. It's like, geez, <laughs> dude, he just created property damage. What are you talking about? We can't recover that. 
Oh, jeez. That's, oh, man. So uh, some, <laughs> yeah, I, I have to retrain some of the local PD officers around here. Oh, good deal. Well, I'm going to stop sharing. I know we'll go on good closing point 2 p.m. here, but... Uh, yeah, that's all. This is all great information. And when we can record all that down, like I tell the guys, if you're out flushing a hydrant, if you're flushing a service uh, with the, with the, uh, with the uh, meter removed, you know, we like to track it all because it all adds up. And, and mm -hmm. that, that too is where I'm a little conservative. And sometimes I don't get the information. So there may, there may be, you know, in the course of a month, we may have several thousand gallons of water. That right. I, and you can, with the state range, put exactly when. So if you're like, man, I'm kind of wondering if there's a leak or like we've lost a lot of water or just whatever it is, just having all those numbers presented yeah. to you in a yeah. digestible exactly. form <laughs> is very nice. Um, and so, yeah. yeah. Do you, Hey, here's another thing too. We've had situations where, um, you know, we may have had a malfunction uh or an incident and mm -hmm. you know one of the reservoirs might have overflowed for a while and you know we have to kind of record that down separately is that something that you could put in is like miscellaneous uh, water loss through uh overflows or things of that nature i know a lot of people you know like when they're doing tanks they'll overflow a tank after they get done and they probably want to keep track of that that's a um, good point. Yeah, I think we're going to create a dashboard specifically just for water loss. So we'll have anything from hydrant flushing to those water leaks to um, what you're talking about to you yet. Yeah, any tanks and pretty much anything where yeah, the water leaks the system. <laughs> you know, and, and when you drain a tank, you know, you're losing all that water. We try to drop the tank as much as we can to a point where we feel comfortable, and then we'll shut that side of the tank down. We're fortunate here because all our concrete tanks have dividers in them, so they're a two-chamber tank. We can shut one side off and maintain the other one full while we're doing maintenance on the other side, and that's nice and unique for us. Um, good deal. Yeah, I didn't even think about the tank. Oh, yeah, I'll That'll tell you good. what. it's, that's a, it's a, That can be a big one. Too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, you know, you, you're dumping off all that water and you would like a place like this in a central database where I can just go in and say, okay, on this date, uh, we drained mm -hmm. off this tank and here's the, the gallons that we drained. Yeah, definitely. That's the point. Yeah, that's, we don't have every asset. Go ahead, Seth. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say it's a good question. I mean, that's what we like to hear is how we can help you out. And I think within reason, like we can do almost anything that you want. Um, like, can you track this? Can we track that in certain ways? Like, yeah, we can, we can do all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always these little things that pop up that you remember. So, oh yeah, that'd be a great, great way to, yeah. to track that down. And it would also kind of remind my guys out in the field. Cause you know, you get out there, you get complacent, you get doing something. Cause we've got a policy where if you're going to go and change out a meter, we want a before picture of the meter before you change it out. And then after picture, we put it right in the, uh, customer file folder mm, so that we'll pull up their right. file and we'll say yeah you got a brand new meter here it is there's a picture of it in fact um you know and yep. then also we could incorporate guys... that too herb with your meter points where you have like up oh, here's you know we could have even three or four different meter trip if it was a long-term customer <laughs> right. that might yeah. out outlive you though <laughs> yeah say hey how come we keep changing meters in your place what's up with that yeah Exactly. Hey, keeping track of those photos on your meters too can really help you on your uh, lead service line inventories. Mm -hmm. just exactly. Like right. Yeah, we, we have yeah. a system that just had all their meters replaced, and they have photos of it. So they're we're using that along with the tie cards for the lead solution. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and we'll jump you into that too, Herb. It's gonna be you know every system's got to do it. So it's, yeah. <laughs> But, no, uh, that would be great. Awesome. Well, guys, it's been really good. Um, we'll have yeah. a follow-up session, and we'll send out emails, but like we'll update this page, so we'll have all the dates and videos, so you can actually Well, I will it. attest that you haven't been playing any online games while you, you've actually been busy, because I can see the results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing a lot of customized working, and hopefully while we're in the field in the summer, GPS collecting, we'll have a lot of this autopilot set up so you guys can start really yeah. using it to the next level. So and we did really it, have... Herb. Yep, your yeah. feedback's always greatly appreciated. We we can really get a lot of use when we hear from 
you know, real operators that will give us feedback because at the end of the day, that's what we need. <laughs> and hey, we're, we're glad to help because you know what? The end result is we're all going to benefit from this. So we greatly exactly. appreciate your, your assistance as well in doing this, taking the time to do it. Um, right. uh, that to me justifies our cap uh, 100% because these are things that we couldn't do on our own. Um, mm -hmm. certainly there was one other thing I was going to, uh, ask too. And I, uh, I'll, I'll have to do it in a separate email or something. <laughs> I know, I know. A lot so, of things yeah. Do. So, Hey, you know what? The last time he was here, we set up all of the, uh, the iPads and stuff. We are definitely going to need probably a little bit more, uh, training on yeah. that at some point just to get a little refresher. Um, mm -hmm. and then that once we get out in the field and get the swing of it, now, are we going to be able to, each one of us going to be able to go out with our own separate iPads and then, and do, uh, sections, different sections at the same time and, and upload that data without interfering with anyone else? Yeah, exactly. Just not GPS collecting obviously will be limited to the unit, whoever's connected, but you can right. even disconnect. But as far as all this inspection, if you guys both had a tablet, you're doing a hydrant flush. Yeah, you guys can both access um, the data and update while you're doing this. So yeah, yeah we'll have that set up for everybody. Well, because we'll go out and get the GPS locations of all of the hydrants in the system probably for us to take some photos while we're there of the that hydrant. That would be good. Yeah, to update your initial inventory and then get that inspection. Yeah, and then we can kind of go and freelance a little bit. Mm -hmm, for sure. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, Herb. We'll definitely, yeah. I, I won't drag you. We're really getting the momentum now. Your your database is already set up with everything you see. So, yeah, we'll just have to get the offline areas working and a little more training for you to go out there. But then you'll be in good shape. <laughs> yeah, I think what I'll do is expand that Excel spreadsheet, even though we have this online. But I think I'll expand that Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Uh -huh. that Excel spreadsheet that we have to include longitude and latitude of the location. Uh, well, yeah, we're definitely. Here. And we can export that from the map and like, um, so you can match the, you know, to your, uh, that would be, form. that would be good. That would be even. Yeah. So you don't need to manually we'll have, yeah, we'll be able to do that for you. All right. So. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Cause we'll be GIS and then when we get out there. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to everybody soon. So. Everyone have a good rest of your day. That's good. Thanks, Herb. Thanks, Adam. Yep, thanks again, Herb. Hey, guys. Thanks, thanks, thanks all of you.